Good morning. Um, I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope everyone enjoyed their mothers, <laughs> mothers, their National Women's Day celebrations yesterday. Uh, apparently this year now women don't want to be called in Bogoto anymore. <laughs> the same females that used to call themselves rocks don't want to call, don't want to be called rocks anymore. It's quite amusing. Who would want to be a rock anyways, but this is what you females in there flip-flopping. Uh, two, maybe, three, maybe, people asked me for my opinions around, um, there was a Twitter war between Uvosino Nusizwe, Uvosite Miwai Nusizwe Loma, which has kind of become normal as of late. Um, Sizwe is normally trolling Uvusi a lot. Uh, I think Sintletse, Sintletse, whatever this guy's name is, also trolls Uvusi quite a bit, but Sizwe takes the cake. Um, so this is not the first time they've had a tour, Twitter war, and I made a video that I posted, I think, even on my YouTube channel, King Penwell, when they were debating around the taxi industry. And I think Vusi gave some ideas and Vusizwa said that those ideas were stolen from him. And then Vusi said, ah, those ideas are not unique to Sizwe, whatever. Um, and the joke became in that video or in that Twitter war that it was two Zulu guys fighting over taxis. What's new? Um, then there was the issue with the fake watch. Uh, Uvusi Tembewayo got a gift of this watch that he posted and then people that knew watches pointed out that the watch is fake and Uvusi came later and he apologized and said it was a gift he didn't know, etc. The latest one was sparked by... What was it sparked by? I think Uvusi said something along the lines of um, he slept in his car for seven months, you know, before he became a millionaire and... Sees when other guys on Twitter went to pull out his files on the specific year, I think it was 2007, that he says he was sleeping in his car. And in the same year, he claims to have been a director of a company, I think, called Metcash, uh, which was making millions and millions of rands. And he was brought on to be innovative, to boost sales, etc. You know, and if you go online or you go on Twitter, obviously gives details of the three or four years he was there and, and uh, apparently how his specific division was was performing. Um, they pulled the files to show that he was lying, number one, or he was not being fully truthful. Number two, um, it seems like there were two documents. One said he started 2007, one said it started 2005, of which I think Uvos is disputing one of them as a Photoshop job. Caesar obviously loves pointing out that he thinks Uvos is a scammer and a liar, um, and he, he went all out this time, and Uvusi obviously got touched, and he responded, um, and he was giving his opinions on Usizwe and the fact that he comes from a well-off family and he's self-made, etc. You know, it went back and forth with Usizwe, as per usual, with Uvusi and a few other people <laughs> calling him out, who's like, I'm sorry, and uh, at any given time, it can be game on, you know, Ngaliwa. That's pumiling apparently, bro. You know, uh, so I'm, I decided to make this video because I, I wasn't going to make a video. Um, but I decided to make this video because I wanted to talk about the concept of self-made versus, uh, I guess, inherited wealth or being born into a family with money or connections, whatever the case may be. Um, I grew up like a lot of you guys um, from a, I don't want to say a poor family because that's misleading. I, I grew up from average means, you know. Um, my mom was a teacher, um, and to this day I'm convinced that teachers are paid very well. Uh, she was a teacher, and there were three of us, and my father didn't really chip in financially into our upbringing. We'd see him every other weekend, you know. We did have some kind of relationship with him, but financially he didn't contribute um, and in other ways, they didn't really contribute. So we, we were majorly raised by a single, a single mother. You know, my mother managed to send us to school uh, with her paycheck, uh, managed to move us from the township to the suburbs, 
uh, allowed us to do all these really nice extra murals uh, to a point where I managed to get into Rhodes. Uh, my first year was NISFAS and then I got a scholarship from Ernst & Young and then I finished my accounting uh, with that money from Ernst & Young. Uh, my brother, I think, was on NISFAS and edu loans, I think, during varsity. Uh, my sister's now at a time where my mom has more money and less responsibilities and less debt. So my mom manages to pay her, her fees, which is pretty awesome, quite privileged. All this from a teacher's salary. And anyone who's grown up with a teacher, you know, the, the whole story of we're poor, we're struggling, it's not really true. A lot of teachers and their kids live in the suburbs. A lot of the kids have clothing accounts. They wear nice Mr. Price and Truett and Markham's clothing. Um, the parents have cars. Uh, the kids get to do nice things. You get to eat takeouts. We're not poor. I know what poverty looks like. You know, we didn't grow up in RDPs. We didn't grow up on grants. Um, we didn't grow up begging for clothing and food. So we didn't grow up poor. Middle class. Um, a lot of us who are raised middle class grow up kind of almost demonizing people that are rich and kids from rich families. It's very sad how this miseducation and mis this misinformation came about. But a lot of us don't really idolize business people growing up. By business people, I'm talking your taxi owner. I'm talking your Ubaba that owns a supermarket, Ekasi. I'm talking your car wash, your Shisanyama. We're not really raised to idolize these people. We're raised to idolize doctors and lawyers and engineers, chartered accountants, you know. Um, and for us, that's what success looks like, you know. And obviously, Kiyosaki speaks about it in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This whole thing of being highly educated by being financially illiterate. And a story came out even last, last year, the year before. There was a time when uh, Kylie Jenner, I think, was told to be a billionaire. And it was like self-made. And a lot of people got really touched. What do you mean self-made? She comes from a rich family. Self-made means you're coming from the dust, etc., etc., etc. So, again, this thing came out of self-made versus inherited wealth. And Uvusi was basically trying to point out very much that he's built everything from scratch himself. Any success he has is his own. And it's not because his family had money or connections or whatever. Uh, and Uvusi, on the other hand, all the things that he does, he does for fun because his grandfather was very rich. I don't know if he was an ANC cater. I know there was an issue with AKA calling out Caesar's father as in BMP, and he ended up apologizing. But it seems Usizu's grandfather was a businessman. You know, he left them land. There's been a picture of Usizu at Lomo on top of a horse wearing, wearing bootleg jeans and, and a cowboy hat. Um, and Uvusi calls that out. Look, you're just some spoiled rich kid. I actually, everything that I've made has been from myself and my efforts. And a lot of people, obviously, like people that were raised like us, are on Uvusi's side. Caesar spoiled, it comes from money, etc. And those things upset me now because of my experience and my exposure with rich people and self-made people and people that come from families that are well off. And one of the questions I did ask on Twitter was, does this mean that Vusi's children, assuming Vusi is rich and ends up leaving his children wealth, does this mean that Vusi's children must not be taken seriously? by other children who um, are self-made, so to speak. Similarly, what about Caesar's life is not self-made? Uh, is Vusi insinuating that any TV gig, radio gig, any other business venture is done has been because of his parents or his grandparents? Were they the ones that introduced him to certain people? Did they push him to do certain things? Would he have not done that on his own? Which part of Caesar's life and success and work can Caesar claim and which can he not claim and say, look, this is thanks to my parents and my grandparents, etc. So that we can, we can fully be able to differentiate. You can't fully demonize a person's hustle and say, well, you grew up in money. That's not really fair. And we need to look at the hypocrisy. It's called cognitive dissonance. The nice English of having contradictory thoughts and ideas, being pro-black, but then supporting white businesses and sending your kids to white schools. That's cognitive dis dissonance. So this thing of, of demonizing people that come from money 
Meanwhile, we'd like to be money so that our kids can come from money. You know, number one. And number two, the ability to teach your children that, number one, the success that has been built has been from your parents or your grandparents' hard work. So appreciate that. Cherish it. Look after it. Maintain it. Try and build on it. That's very important. And then number two, we need to stop this thing. And I've realized it's mostly a black thing. We need to stop this thing of separating our parents or our grandparents' achievements from ourselves. And there's, there's a second generation money uh, black gent that I, that I counsel every now and then. And one of his big things is this thing of living in his father's shadow and wanting to uh, be self-made and wanting to earn his own. You know? And I keep telling him, it's a waste of fucking time. You are an extension of your father. Any success that your father has built has been for you. And what I love doing is when I discuss certain concepts, I love bringing them home to make them make sense to a normal person. If your mom is a teacher and because she's a teacher, she helps you get access to a, a bursary for what, at a teaching college and she ends up helping you apply to a certain district to get into teaching and then you become a teacher. If you make a bit of money as a teacher and you end up being a principal or whatever, and then you go around telling people I'm self-made, no one really cares. It's fine. No one is going to say, but your mom was a teacher. You are helped. This is not your success. You're an extension of what your mom or your dad has done for you. They built a foundation so that you can begin laying the bricks and hopefully your children will build a ceiling and build a roof and extend the house. So we need to stop this behavior of, well, this is my parents' money. This is my parents' wealth. This is my grandfather's farm. Understanding that psychologically the reason why you are told these things and the reason why people say these things is because they don't want you to be spoiled. They don't want you to take things for granted. They don't want you to feel like some success is magically yours even though you didn't work for it. So I understand psychologically what that's meant to do. It's meant to be a humility exercise. This is not mine, it's my father's. I need to work hard as well. However, understand, and I, I discussed this even with the Majlozi and the passing on of genes, etc. What your parents have done, what your grandparents have done is meant to be yours. So if your grandfather leaves you a supermarket, that's yours. And you need to walk around from when you're in primary school telling people, guys, I have a supermarket, come support it. Yeah, but it's your grandfather's. Yes, it's my grandfather's, which means it's my father's, which means it's mine. When my grandfather and my father die, it's mine. So I have to look after it as if it's mine. All the way to small things like a car. Your father needs to stop telling you this is my car. This is our car. Your father needs to look at you and be like, please go wash our car. If ever I die tomorrow, you inherit this car. Make sure that my car is well looked after. Don't steal it at night. Don't speed because this is yours. Take care of it. I had the opportunity of chilling with a, a young Muslim chap I went to school with at Newcastle High. And he used to talk about his farm and his construction business. 23 years old at the time. And I could not fathom the success, you know. This guy had a farm with about 300 Bonsmara cattle on it. Uh, and he had a construction business that was building houses, I believe, in, in KZN. And I sat with him for a couple of days. We went to and see his cows. We went to and see the farm. Uh, I never got a chance to go and see the construction that they'd done. But, you know, we spoke a bit about business. And in listening to his story, I realized that the farm that he was on, that he said was his, was land that his grandfather had bought or acquired in some way, that it split in four and given to his sons. One of his sons was this chap's father. The father went on to become a pharmacist. He wasn't really interested in farming. One of the uncles was a farmer, and this boy got to learn farming from his uncle. And then he took over his father's land, and he started developing these cattle using a base from his uncle. And today he's now, this is my farm. It's a family farm. Similarly, the construction business is one that belongs to another uncle that he, after he graduated from varsity, went to go and join to help his uncle build this business. But everywhere he goes, and I'll tell you this, Jews do the same. I have a business, or we have a family business. Another mentor of mine spoke about he's running his, his father's business and one of his brothers reports to him as a subordinate. 
And I was asking him about how does this work? How does your brother report to you? Don't you guys fight? And he was like, no, everyone in the family understands their position. Everyone in the family understands their skills and their abilities, etc. So my brother knows where his limitations are. And he respects me as his boss because he knows what my skill set is as well. My point is we need to stop separating our family success from ourselves. If my brother is a doctor, I'm a fucking doctor. You ask me what medicine to take. You tell me what your symptoms are. If I haven't learned that stuff from my brother, I'll ask him. Hey, bro, uh, someone is telling me they blah, blah, blah. What should I say? And then I come and I tell you. This thing of going to varsity off your parents sweat and struggle and then coming back and beating your chest. I'm the family doctor and you this god. It's bullshit. Just come home every holiday or even on WhatsApp via video call and be upskilling your parents and your siblings every day. Guys, I just did a surgery. Did you guys know the esophagus works like this? Did you guys know if you do this to the spine, please try these medications. Please go for generics. Uh, when you get to a hospital, make sure you ask for this specific doctor. Look for these specific symptoms. It's, and after five years of spending time with a medical student or a doctor, you must become an honorary healthcare worker. Purely because you've sucked so much information from this person that you're almost qualified to have some kind of knowledge in that space. If I'm spending enough time with musicians for 10 years, I'm not a musician, I don't make music, but I'm always with them in the studio. I'm always with them on tour. I'm always with them on stage. I understand sound, microphone management, uh, how to deal with gigs and invoices, uh, stage presence, your branding, uh, working with various brands, being on TV, being on time. I may as well be an honorary musician and I can go around advising anyone what it takes to make it in music, some of the things you must watch out for, etc., 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 etc. That's meant to be the benefit of being around someone who's built something. And if your grandfather built something and they had your father or your mother or they, and then they had you, you have that blood within yourself. You can't be woke talking about we're the descendants of kings and queens and pharaohs, but then you don't want to take credit for being the descendant of a successful businessman or successful politician or successful uh, professional, CEO, senior manager, a school teacher, a nurse, a doctor, a police officer. You must be able to handle guns from a very young age because your dad was a cop. So you understand guns. You understand bullets. You know how the police force works. You know how people get arrested, uh, how to draft an affidavit, etc., etc., etc. Because you've been in this space. So I really urge people to obviously respect self-made people. Being self-made is very difficult we're talking like wealth now like 10 million rand it's very difficult to be self-made it takes luck it takes hard work it takes being at the right place at the right time it takes so many various factors to make it but just because a child or a grandchild is the descendant of someone who was self-made it doesn't diminish what they have it's something that was built by someone who is within their being and what they need to do is obviously be humble Understand that, look, I didn't build this. My grandfather or my great-great-grandmother built this, but I, I, I'm humble to the fact that they didn't build it. I'm humble. It's not mine. However, I have a responsibility to take care of it, to maintain it at the very least, and hopefully to build onto it and then to transfer it onto the next generation. Understanding, they must also understand that this is ours. This is the family business. This is the family hustle. This is what we do. This is what we have within ourselves i think that's vitally 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 important because then when you hear someone saying this is whoever's child this is whoever's grandchild try and separate their parent grandparent from the person's hustle yes your father's a politician you a tenderpreneur but how did you get into tenders did your father just hand you a tender did your father maybe introduce you to a person because this is what happened with tutuzan you know no no and his father who jacob okay ladies as a child, I'm your father, I'm a senior politician in the ANC. I've always got people coming in and out of, the, out of the house. Business people, other politicians, celebrities, whatever. And as a young kid, you meet all these people. Could be an actor, could be, I mean, Zuma's got a, a child, Ukuku, who's, who now does production for Uzalo. She used to act on his team. 
got various actors, you've got musicians that come in. And as a child, you pick your poison. You're like, I want to be in business. And your father introduces you to this Indian family, the Guptas. And you, you develop, out of all the 20 plus children, you develop an interest and you get to meet this family and you spend time with them. And if you've ever been in business, you'll know that business is craft. So you have to travel with these guys. You have to go to certain meetings. You have to fill in invoices. You have to email stuff. You have to scan shit. You have to take risks. You have to go and raise funding. You have to go and speak to employees. Something's gone wrong. You're dealing with managers. Make sure that you've got money. You've, all these things. Yes, his father is the one that introduced him to these people. But his father didn't give him a business. His father didn't just put him on a board. The boy had to work and hustle his way into becoming someone of value. And if you listen to him speaking today, you can hear of some of his experiences. You can hear when he's speaking the stuff that they've done, the businesses that they've either taken over, that they've built, the jobs that they've created, etc., etc., etc. So you have to respect some of what Duduzan is hustle. The same way if you've ever watched Blackish, you've got Diana Ross's daughter that, that acts as Rainbow. Just because you're Diana Ross's daughter doesn't mean you magically have scripts that are built into your head. She has to wake up every day and go over a script and make sure that it's correct. Make sure that she's gotten it right. She has to go on set, get her makeup done, put on the costume, uh, the dress, wardrobe rather, uh, get on set and then action. And then she has to act. Her mom gave her that platform of being able to be in the industry easier than the next child. So you humble yourself and you thank your mom. But then you have to work. Because the next child will just inherit like a, a trust fund or a pension fund. They don't do any work. But you work. And we have to respect that you're working. So uh, from a Vusi and a Sizwe perspective, I just, I wanted to point that out. I, I can go on for much longer, but I think I'll stop there. We need to respect how people are hustling, how people are making money. We need to stop demonizing people who inherited wealth and or maybe even brains or inherited beauty. <laughs> Or inherited whatever, you know, it's what their parents did for them. If you'd like your children to have the same perks and the same privileges, do that for yourself. You know, go marry a white person so you can get the land. Go bleach so you can be a yellow bone. Go inject butt implants, whatever it takes. Like, do what makes you happy and what allows you to win. And stop hating on how other kids win. Because one day your kids will be those trust fund babies that everyone is demonizing. Meanwhile, you know how much you, sweat, you, you, you had sweated to get there. And you know how hard you work to try and get your kids to understand that. Just as a parting shot, uh, I think third or fourth generation BMW, the brother and the sister were on the board. And they were talking about how scared they were of taking over BMW from the previous generation. And how their number one, number one priority was maintaining the, the family business. They said they thought of getting advisors and professionals uh, to help them run. Uh, instead, they decided to go and study the business inside out. Got qualifications. They spent time. I'm talking about old people here. I'm talking about old white German people in their 40s that were discussing this. They were saying they went and they studied the business inside out and they wanted to humble themselves to understand exactly what it takes to run BMW, this global brand that's so well respected. You know, and today they sit on the board, they give advice, but they say they still allow the people that are smarter than them to lead them. So even in companies as big as that, there are family dynamics that we won't understand. There are things that you have to respect. And you have to understand that the people that are there are not just clowns. It's not just kids that inherit a business and are rich and drive Lamborghinis and party and get drunk and snort cocaine. Some of these people respect what their predecessors have built and they put in the work. They put in the work. Respect how people make their hustles, whether self-made or inherited, make sure that you're crafting, make sure that you're maintaining, make sure that you're building, and if you have children, pass on those skills to the children, make sure that your children are spending time in the family business, and build networks for them, so that even after you die, your children have access to the best opportunities out there. This is Penny Wilder Black, Pen. Cheers.